This special school for boys uses the games they play in their spare time to support a rigorous maths curriculum. This is Balliol School in the north of England. Fantastic start. It's a residential school for boys with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties. You to think about angles, don't you, and pace. Deputy Head and Maths Teacher Peter Henderson. My approach to math is to try and be as inclusive as possible. Uh, the children that arrive with us have all sorts of difficulties and had problems in their life and in their experience of school in, prior to their arrival here. They each have a statement of special needs saying that their difficulties cause a barrier to their learning. And so I try to make the activities as much a part of their everyday life and fun as I possibly can. All these social activities can have a mathematical content to them. And so we were losing a trick if we didn't try and include the activities that they do in the evening and use that time to develop their, their experience. So even when the boys are relaxing out of school hours, the residential staff feed some simple mathematical concepts into the games they play. The first one is quite simple. It's how many darts it takes for you to hit the first five odd numbers. So Dan, what are the first five odd numbers? Um, one, three, and five. First five, so we need some more, we need two more. Seven and nine. Oh. Seven and nine, thank you, Jack. We're gonna take it in turns, three darts. We had a member of the residential learning team who works with the, the boys in the evening, actually taking them through some dart activities. Cross off the two ones. And one, fantastic, Dan. We were talking about how we could challenge the boys to use language or, that they wouldn't normally use. They wouldn't normally use, give me the first five odd numbers, give me the first five even numbers, give me the next three multiples. But they could have fun while they did it. Watch carefully, Dylan, now, because you could be caught out. The idea behind the large four in a row was that the boys could physically manipulate the pieces and hopefully have a bit of fun while they were doing it. Try to develop some sort of strategy in order to win the game. So they start to think about how they place things and what order they place them. And then by putting just a simple set of axes on them, we could actually link that into the coordinates. And so we could connect the game into coordinates. Well done, Dylan. You need to tell me the coordinates now. Well, right, so that would be... That Maxis. one's four, one, five, two and six and three and seven and four. And if the boys saw the activities as fun and could transfer it into the classroom, it's what I call putting mathematical currency in the bank. What were you asked to do on the dartboard? What, what uh, sort of hit thing? the odd numbers. Odd numbers? Yeah, the first five. And what were in they? the school's classroom, three, three, Peter five. follows up the maths in the games they were playing. Dad, can you tell me what the first five even numbers were? Two, four, six, eight, ten. And you had to throw darts and see how quickly you could get them. Yeah. Yeah. So on the sheet of paper I'm giving you now is a dartboard. Can I have a volunteer, please, to read the challenge? How many different ways can you use up to three darts so that your score adds up to 20? OK. In your mind, work out what you're trying to do. Could you score a 20 in one dart? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah? Could you score a 20 in two darts? Yeah. yeah. And could he score a 20 and 3 darts? Yeah. 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 So what else is on the, the dartboard that makes it a little bit more complicated than just saying 10 and 10? The double ring, the triple ring, the bullseye and the ball. So could, could someone give me 20 in two darts? 15 and 5. 15 and 5. Could somebody give me a 20 and 3 darts using the double ring? Dylan? 10 and double five. 10 and double five. So how many darts have we used there? Three. Two. One. Two. So you understand the problem. I want you to write down how many different ways you can make the 20. Keep that thought in mind. Don't let it out yet, because I want you to put it on a bit of paper. Three, two, two. Pen, please, as well, sir. In the school setting, I like to set the lads a challenge to share ideas and to work socially together. All sorts of benefits that could come out of that. 17, 2, 1. 17, 2, and 1, that's 20. 19 and 1. 
one plus nine, two plus eight. What? Math wrong. Nineteen. Two plus eighteen. Three plus seventeen. Six plus fourteen. Ten, five, and five. Ten, five, and five. Double ten. Double one and double four. Now how about using a double? I can't do that. Well let's try this. What did we say before? That's the double, that's the triple, that's the double. So what did we say? Double. Try this one. If it's double seven, double seven is fourteen. Let's just jot that down, shall we? Fourteen. Sixteen and four, fifteen and five, fourteen and six and going You've got down. in your head, keep them in your head because you can't write that fast. <laughs> Have you got 18 plus 1 plus 1? Put if it down. we did that, then we would go on forever, wouldn't we? Put it down, because then we have more and more. Double 3 is 6, then double 4 is 8, so that is 14. Then double 3 is 6, that makes 20. I'm going to give you a challenge. And Brian, you read the last one so well. Do you mind reading the next one? With a partner, play the four in a row game and record the coordinates of the winning line. How many different types of winning line can you find? What do you notice about the coordinates? Brian, how do you work out the coordinates for something? I do, along the corridor and up the stairs. Along the corridor and up the stairs. What do you mean by going along the corridor? Can you put that in some you other words? Across the x-axis. Across first. the x-axis, brilliant. So what's up the stairs then? The y-axis. So you're challenged, Jordan? You have to find out how many different ways you can win. Oh, no. So you don't necessarily have to play the game, you've got to look to connect four in a row and write down what the coordinates of those four are. And there's going to be lots of different ways of doing it and you're going to try and find as many different ways as you can. And then look at the coordinates and see if you can come up with any kind of patterns to work out if somebody gave you just the coordinates, what sort of connection that would be. Look at these Four in a row. Oh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> and what sort of shape? How would you describe that series of four? Diagonal. What word? Diagonal. Diagonal, yeah. See if you can write that down there in your writing. So that reminds you, if they're the same, it's the diagonal. He's my job. It's best if you both look at it from the same side so you can see this. You've got one? Yeah. What do you right. notice? Know they're all on one. They're all one. So that, what, what do you call that number there in the coordinates? Is it the X coordinate or the Y coordinate? X. Look again. Which one? What? The what? Is it the X or the oh, Y? Oh, that's the Y. That's the Y. So the Y coordinate there is, is the same. So that gives you a line going that way. Right. I win. The nature of the children is that prior to their arrival here, they've they failed, they feel failed, their self-esteem is low because they're not at home and they're not in their normal school setting, their mainstream school setting. They've come away to a, to a special school to help them overcome the, any difficulties they have. That means that they find it very difficult forming relationships and working together with other people. So part of the working in pairs and working as a group, albeit a small group, and that is the, the beauty of a school like this, is that the maximum class size is going to be eight, possibly nine. Then you can work the, the dynamics together so that they overcome their difficulties and they develop socially and emotionally and behaviourally. Dylan, I love the way that you've represented your answers because you've come up with... The answer to the, to the challenge, or answers to the challenge, and you've shown, you've decided to show it in a, in a particular way. Can you tell me what you've done? We've written the coordinates, but also shown the circle, the you know, little pieces, which way they went to get the coordinates. And how many different ways did you find? Four. Four different ways. And did you notice any patterns? Yeah. What, give me an example. When it went horizontal, then it went, there are all ones, the Y axis. The Y coordinates. When it went diagonal going right, they were both the same numbers, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the X and Y coordinates were the same? Yeah. Yeah, what else? And then the, when it was going up, the X ones are all three. Yeah. When it's going diagonal um, left, 
goes down. It was going four three two one, and then on the X it was four three two one, and the Y it was one two three four. So they so were the same numbers but reversed. Yeah. Brilliant. Well done. That's fantastic. The boys then go on to use a computer game to explore coordinates in all four quadrants. You've got to get Billy Bug to all of his food that are, and it tells you where to go because it has a little coordinate up there. Oh, I'm not doing very good. Done! 44 seconds! Say that again! 44 seconds! 44 seconds, that's excellent! Wow. Minus 42. I think it's there. I know it's working because the lads tell me they enjoy it. For example, in the connecting coordinates, the objective was to be able to plot coordinates in all four quadrants. And while by making it fun and playing the game, the Billy Bug game, they were managing to plot coordinates in all four quadrants. And they were also doing it in under a minute. So plotting 10 coordinates in all four quadrants in under a minute, I could see that the boys were doing it. And Peter has more evidence to support his work. I then put the key process skills uh, as a map. And when I, when I take my assessment at the end, and after the activity and I consider it, I highlight in yellow which of the um, key process skills I felt were achieved. For example, in analysing, there's reasoning. And in the reasoning, there was justifying. Uh, working logically, making connections. You could see all that today in the activity that, that we followed. Then I linked that to the personal learning and thinking skills, you know, working as part of a team. Were they self-managers? Were they effective participants? I've coded those. So I1, for example, is for independent inquirers. Identify questions to answer and problems to resolve. Level four, five is where I pitched it. I then have a comment at the end saying how the boys enjoyed it or if there's anything for further development. It's just to make it more fun as a math lesson, so kid, instead of getting bored. Like at a mainstream school, you couldn't do that because there's 30 kids and you start messing around and stuff. So is having the boys living in the school in some ways an advantage? I think we do have an advantage because we have the, the children for longer. Uh, and particularly in the, in the situation where we encourage staff to form positive working relationships with the children. And I've tried to use all sorts of styles of learning. There's the physical learning where they're actually physically moving. There's the one where they're solving the challenges and they have to think and write down the answers so they're right reading and writing. There's the one where it's the visual side of it where I use the computers to, to get that visual stimulus as well. So there's auditory, visual, kinesthetic, all those sort of learning styles uh, I try to embody in the activities. <laughs> if, if I said to the lads, well, what, why do you do maths? You know, what, 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 why is maths important? The, the normal answer is you need it for a job. But equally, you can need maths for playing a game of darts down the pub when you're, you know, when you're older. You, so their social um, development, maths is crucial to helping them take an active and uh, important part in their, in their life and in society in general. Mm -hmm.